time to wine and dine with me. I'm Jess, your pampered chef. Join me and let's bring it back to our tables. Let's get inspired and turn everyday ordinary into something really extraordinary. We can do this right here in our kitchens using the inspiration of the wonderful, high quality and very fun products of The Pampered Chef. Hey guys, welcome. It's episode five of Wine and Dine with Just Your Pampered Chef. Quick little rundown of what this is about. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, this is to help you get inspired by your Pampered Chef products that you already own. If you don't own them and you're watching and you're getting inspired, it means that maybe you need to put some of those products in your kitchen. So today's menu was created, um, designed around, I guess you can say, a wine that I loved. So this is so exciting. If you are a wine drinker, you know what I'm talking about. When you geek, get geeked up over um, a wine so much that you want to create your meal because of the wine. So this wine is a Zinfandel from Lodi, California. Karen Birmingham is the winemaker. And um, you can check out the link below if you're on YouTube for Naked Wines. That is where I purchase all my wines from. Anyways, so quick story. Back in September, my husband and I went to a BYOB restaurant. It was a, it's a Latin bistro, and it was the first time we'd ever been there. So first of all, the food was phenomenal. It was so good, you guys. And then on top of that, we opened up this wine, which we had never had, and it was remarkable. And then you pair the food and the wine together, and it was like, pow, it was amazing. I know I get so excited, but if you're a wine drinker, you know what I'm talking about when it, all, everything comes together and it's just amazing. So the winemaker just released a new batch. So I finally got my hands on some more um, and I'm really excited to open this up. So the meal that I'm making today is really simple. You guys are gonna love it. It's gonna knock your socks off um, and it's also gonna go really well with my Zinfandel. So anyways, it is a grilled marinated flank steak. And we're gonna be drizzling a homemade chimichurri sauce right over it. And then a side of garlic paprika roasted potatoes. Hello, does that just sound like heaven? So let's get started. I'm gonna go right into the flank steak, marinate that, and then right after that, you're gonna see me um, make that chimichurri sauce right in the manual food processor. So let's do it. Okay, you guys, let's get this uh, marinade underway here. So I'm just gonna go through the products, throw them in the bowl, and you'll see how easy this is. Um, first, I'm gonna start off with the soy sauce. I, this is just a gluten-free soy sauce, but of course use any soy that you might have or you want to buy um, in your home. I have never measured my marinade ever. So I, the reason why I'm telling you that is you don't need to measure your marinade. The only reason why I'm using this quarter cup is to just give you a little bit of an idea of how much is going to go in for a pound of flank steak, okay? So I have a quarter cup there. Depending on what it looks like, I may add more at the end. I'm not sure because, like I said, I've never measured it. Um, next, I'm going to put in wine. Red wine um, has great acids in it, and not only that, great flavor. But that acid is going to break down the uh, meat fibers in that meat, and this is part of the tenderizing process. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Other great acids to use would be um, citrus, lemon, things like that, but sometimes that doesn't always go well with the red meats. That's great for chicken and fish. Um, beer, beer's a great marinade to put. That has a lot of great um, acids that can break down that meat and add some really great flavor. So next we're gonna do an olive oil, and this just helps coat it nicely and bring everything together and also adds great flavor, of course. So put that in there. Um, also, I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm trying to think here. Um, I'm gonna do this. This is the Southwest seasoning from Pampered Chef. Now this part you can get a little creative with. I've also used this bell pepper rub. Also guys, McCormick steak seasoning, you can buy right in the store. That's also a really good one to use. I'm gonna do, these are our measuring spoons. Watch why I love these. Look at the way they're shaped. Not only do they sit on the table without tipping over, so like if you have you know, your stuff and you're just waiting you know, to throw it in, you can put it right on the table with your olive oil or whatever it is that you're measuring. But it fits the way that it's designed. It fits right into these narrow necks of these bottles, which there's not many out there that do. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do about two tablespoons of this in the marinade, okay? So last but not least, we're gonna use the garlic press and we're gonna throw in a couple of cloves of fresh garlic. Now the garlic press, if you notice, I haven't even peeled the garlic. I'm gonna take my little Barbie hairbrush out here that gets um, all the garlic out of the press. 
So we're gonna crush it just like that. And I'm gonna use my little um, Barbie brush here to get all of that out. And I'm gonna put a couple more of these in. Garlic is, I don't know about you guys, have you noticed how big the garlic is now? Like, look at this thing. What is that? Are you kidding me? What's happening with our garlic? Anyways, you get the idea, right? So we got everything in there. I'm gonna take the metal whisk, which is right here, and whisk that all up. Now, I like this metal whisk because it has a lot of strands and they're thick. Um, look at your whisk at home if you have one. If it looks really dinky, it's time to get a new one. And the reason why is because the dinkier your little your whisk is, the harder it is to use. So the more strands it has, the more hair strands it has, I think that's what they call it, but um, it's going to be easier and it's going to whip things up, especially when you're baking, okay? All right. Before I throw it in there, I just wanted to show you something really important because it's how you cut the flank is everything. You're gonna cut it against the grain. So what does that mean? You're like, Jess, what does that even mean? Okay, so if you look here on the flank, you can see the way the lines run down. Okay, these lines that are running down. That is what we call like the grain of the steak. So cutting against the grain after it's cooked, I'm going to cut like perpendicular um, against that grain. So I'm gonna be slicing it like this. If you slice it like this, you're cutting it um, parallel to the grain and that is going to just keep it a tougher bite. So cutting it against the grain is going to be another step in tenderizing this meat, which is a very, very flavorful cut of meat. Um, you just need to break down those fibers and tenderize it and then cut it correctly and you'll get a really, really great um, outcome. So. Let's put this right in. I'm gonna use my chef tongs here. It's hard to see because they angle the camera, but these are the gravity chef tongs. And I'm gonna put it right in to my bowl. Let me see so you guys can see that, okay? So I have my flank in my bowl. I'm going to let this marinate. You wanna do it for at least an hour. I personally like to try to make it marinate for a few hours. Look at how good that's gonna be, oh my gosh. I'll probably go in the fridge and flip it after about an hour or so. Okay, you guys, you could also put it in a Ziploc bag, close the Ziploc bag like a gallon size, mush it around and throw it in your fridge. This is our medium size uh, bowl from the classic bowl, the glass um, bowl set. This lid is a silicone lid. These come with a set of three, three different sizes. They fit our bowls perfectly. Um, they will also fit other bowls in your home as well because they're stretchy. Okay, so that's it. We're gonna put that in the fridge. Let it sit in there for a couple hours. Okay, so we're using the manual food processor. No cords. The blade comes in. It comes out very easy. It's lightweight. I love this gadget. You're gonna see why. We're gonna do about a cup and a half of loosely packed cilantro and parsley, flat leaf parsley. These are our two cup prep bowls. I love these because they have lids. They um, are also oven proof and so you can throw them in the oven to warm stuff up or even cook little cakes in them. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our cilantro and parsley. Let's throw these in here. Okay guys, you're just gonna put these right into the manual food processor and we're gonna get cranking on it. So you put the top up right on top of it. It has a little unlocking device here. And once that is up, you're gonna get cranking. And so you're gonna do this just until you get that nice and chopped up. I'm gonna throw in my garlic. I just coarsely chopped some garlic, put that in here. It's gonna equal about two cloves of garlic. And we're gonna go ahead and crank. Okay, so I just cranked this for probably 30 seconds and look at how awesome that looks. So now, after we added our cilantro, our parsley, and our garlic, we're gonna go ahead and add the oil. So I have a quarter cup of olive oil, so I'm just gonna drizzle that right in there. All right, now we're gonna do an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. This is kosher salt. Put that in there. And then as I crank it, I'm gonna taste it. And sometimes I adjust it, and your, your tasting profile might be, obviously it is going to be different than mine, so get it the way that you like it. Um, add stuff to it if, if you know there's something missing for you. This is black pepper. This is our um, stainless steel um, salt and pepper grinder set. If you haven't seen this already, I love these because all the little granulates, when they fall from underneath the, the shaker, they stay right in this little acrylic case, which is, I think, brilliant. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some pepper in there and then I'm gonna go crank away a little bit longer. Okay, I'm also gonna add two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. It doesn't have to be precise measuring, you guys, so 
Don't stress out if a little spills over your measuring spoons. It's not a big deal. Okay, put that back on. And then I'm gonna give this a taste. Okay, let's taste this. So excited, look at how it looks. Can you see how that looks? It's so good. And this is the mini scraper. This is perfect to get all of this off the sides if you wanted to um, incorporate a little bit more of the leaves that didn't get chopped up. So I'm gonna give this a little taste. We'll see how it is. Mmm, man, so good. Okay, you guys, so watch how cool this is to store. I'm gonna lift that blade out, take my mini scraper, get all the little goodies that are stuck on the blades right out with my scraper. Put that aside. Gonna get all the little tidbits from the sides down a little bit. Give it a nice little stir. And then this manual food processor comes with this handy dandy lid. I'm gonna pop the lid on and put it right in my refrigerator so it's all ready to go when I'm ready to top it on top of it. Okay, you guys, we're gonna do the roasted potatoes right now. So I just got a bag of yellow potatoes, small. These are actually from Aldi's. You may even see them there if you go soon. Um, but certainly you can get red potatoes. You can get any kind of yellow small potato. Go to your local grocery store, wherever you like to shop. It doesn't have to be these small yellow ones, just so you know. My son's gonna help me out, right bud? Okay, so we are going to put in, um, actually, go ahead, honey. This is the paprika. He's gonna go ahead and put, this is a tablespoon in here. He's gonna put about a tablespoon of paprika right in there. So try to fill that up a little bit. Okay, anyways, and then this is um, Pampered Chef's garlic infused canola oil. I'm gonna go ahead and just drizzle probably about, I don't know, an eighth of a cup worth, I would say. Awesome job. Okay, so that oil has um, a really great um, garlic essence in it, so it's gonna be really fantastic with these. And then you can help me with the salt, how about that? So Peyton's gonna put the salt in, I'm gonna do pepper. We're just gonna grind some. Peyton's got the um, Himalayan sea salt mixture in the um, Pampered Chef grinder set. Did you put enough in there? Yeah, maybe a little more. I didn't see what you did. Just a couple more. Okay, we can always add more because it's sea salt. So what's great about sea salt is when it comes out of the oven and everything's all nice and hot, you sprinkle a little bit more sea salt and it just lays perfectly right on top of freshly cooked um, items. So this is the classic batter bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and just stir this up a little bit and we're gonna coat that paprika. Paprika has a little bit of like an earthy tone, but what I really love about paprika is the color. Look at that color, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. It's got like a really nice red color. So we're gonna put that in our large bar pan. You guys, this is the stone bar, and it looks all brown because it seasons the more you cook. You want your pan to get really, really dark because the worse it looks, the better it cooks. And so this is getting to look pretty bad, which means that it's really well seasoned. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the potatoes right in here. You wanna set your oven for 400 degrees and you're going to roast your potatoes for approximately an hour so it might be 50 minutes it might be an hour and 10 just check on them um, but pretty much usually about an hour is what they're going to go in for so this is going to be really great and we're going to put that in the oven right now okay so it's time to put the flank steak right on the grill pan so this is pampered chef's grill pan is hard anodized steel it's reinforced with titanium you guys it is so durable and pampered chef puts um a lot of faith in this grill pan set that they actually give it a lifetime warranty so it would be the last grill pan that you own inside here is the cast iron press this is sold separately and I've had the, the heat on right now so it's been heating together with the press on for a few minutes so it's gonna get that grill nice and hot but also this press is gonna get nice and hot so when I put that flank on there I'm gonna put the press on top and it's gonna seal everything in um, from both sides to really ensure a juicy steak I have my flank here let it rest you guys for about 30 40 minutes at room temperature you want to bring um, bring it back to room temperature before you grill it so here we go we're gonna put this right in our grill pan that at a high heat get a really nice sear on it and let it cook for about six minutes and then I'm going to flip it and grill it for approximately another six to seven minutes okay you guys it already cooked for six minutes on one side at a high heat I already flipped it and I left it at a high heat for about another minute and then it turned it to a medium to let it finish its cooking process 
But if you notice, this handle doesn't get hot, which is pretty cool. You, can, you don't have to use any pot holders. I wanted you to just see what it looks like right now. Look at how good that looks. Okay, so I just have about another, I would say, minute or so, and I'm going to take it to a cutting board, slice it up, and then you're going to see the final product with those awesome roasted potatoes, which are also in the oven, just about done. All right, you guys, everything is done. I wanted to tell you that when you take your flank out of the oven, let it rest. Don't touch it, just let it be for about a good five minutes. Let all those juices seal, plus it'll cook a little bit longer as well. So I just steamed up, so I had some cauliflower and broccoli in the fridge, so I just steamed that, steamed that right up and added a little bit of sea salt. So we're gonna have that. Here's my husband. Since this meal was inspired from a date that we went on in September, I thought that he would be a good taste tester, right? Okay, so here's the flank. I have these in our large entertainment platter and our small entertainment platter. It's made out of stoneware. What's cool is I warmed this one up in the oven for a little bit. So now that the flank's been sitting on here, it's keeping it warm because these are oven safe and they're really, really pretty. So we use these a lot, don't we? We've used yeah. these quite a few times. Okay, so here's that wine I told you about. We already talked about that, so let's dig in. Let's yes. take a bite. Okay. <laughs> He's like so excited. I've been waiting for this part. <laughs> All of you people are slowing me down. He's like, yeah. Anyways, you've been a good sport, so I appreciate that. All right, so we're gonna take a bite of the steak. Mmm. Oh, that chimichurri sauce. Mmm. That's really good. Okay, now the potatoes. Mmm. There's a kick. You guys, I forgot to tell you, I put red pepper into this sauce. Mm. You like it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Those potatoes are delicious. Oh good. How's that wine? Is it as good as you remember it? Yeah, the wine goes perfectly with that cut of meat. Oh, it does. Yay! Uh, Cheers, so Ben. Cheers. Yay. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Good luck if you like these um, episodes. Subscribe, you guys. You can subscribe. That way you can see every time that I release a new one. My meals have never been better since she started doing this. Aww. So go buy something. <laughs> to food, friends, and family. Can I eat more? Cheers. Ah, yes. Cheers. <laughs>